do you consider Arizona the next California? Oh uh, yeah, we. Uh, I think Arizona's got some great potential, uh, but uh, and this is a bit of a cheat because we were talking about this <laughs> before we talked uh, started the interview. But um, there are a lot of us in the industry that think that California is the next California. That. California's done a great job so far in certain aspects of, uh, of uh, the market, but there's a big hole in the middle of the market. Mm -hmm. At the very big end of things, the mm -hmm. big uh, projects, multi-hundred megawatt projects in the desert with transmission lines, mm -hmm. uh, that seems to be flowing pretty nicely. The deals are in the works. They haven't started construction on those mm -hmm. projects, but the deals are in the works. And at the very uh, small end, the homes and businesses, that's all taken care of pretty well. Mm -hmm. It's this gap in the middle that I think has some great potential. The California Public Utilities Commission staff issued a report earlier this year in which they looked at that segment and its contribution to the, uh, the overall goal of reaching 33% of our energy from renewable sources by 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, and they believe that there can be th literally thousands of megawatts, maybe 10 or 15,000 megawatts that could come from just that segment alone of one to 20 megawatt projects that are located within the distribution networks mm -hmm. and sold directly to the utility. So that, if that market does materialize, it could dwarf um, a state like Arizona or New Mexico or a smaller state like that. So, so California is still a big player no matter what. But um, we also think Texas has great potential, Florida has great potential. You know, these are all great places. But are they realistically, how far are they from from being realized, even from the policies? A ways, a ways, yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, we just had a disappointing session in Texas this year. The legislature in Texas only meets every other year. And so uh, we got caught up in some politics in Texas where the whole legislature came to a grinding halt over nothing, something that had nothing to do with solar. But solar and, and 100 other bills got caught that should have been passed that never got passed by the legislature. So we'll have to wait another couple of years. Uh, but that's always the challenge. You're dealing with politicians and with legislatures. You know, they sometimes uh, have other things on their mind besides solar. Uh, so, so in your shoes, uh, you have to go state by state. What is, what is your strategy? Where to go first? Where second? Where do you go along the uh, likelihood of success frontier? You know, California being the, the first frontier and then perhaps Arizona and then um, or I, how, what's your strategy? You know, it really actually depends. You would think it would be sunshine. That's, uh -huh. And that is an important contribution because it makes it easier for the systems to pay for themselves if they can produce more electricity. But there are also just the political willingness and interest in the state. So you have a state like Ohio, which is not in the sunniest spot, or even New Jersey, which has had a great program for a while, um, where they the politicians there have felt like this is a really important opportunity. And I think the other part that's now coming to play, uh, coming into play more importantly than previously is the jobs creation aspect of it. So people are realizing that, you know, largely because of, of Obama's lead in this particular area, uh, President Obama, uh, realizing that you know, you might be able to shift your whole industrial base over to a different kind of job uh, instead of being something like automobiles, which is, you know, great jobs, but you can also have great jobs in the, in the green energy industry. So whether it's solar or wind or, or any other aspect of renewable technology, there's the opportunity to uh, create jobs as well as do a better job of producing cleaner, cleaner electricity. So, um, so I think there's a lot of um, factors that even though they're on the surface sort of terrible in general from the economic point of view, they may play uh, into our in, into our favor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, I'll come back to the federal level a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, in the Recovery Act, the ARRA, mm -hmm. I understand there's a Buy American provision. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Centec is subject to dynamics in the whole industry, but as specific to the U.S. market, um, is it going to be impacted by that particular provision being a Chinese-based company? Or if that's the and if that's the case, how are you advising uh, the leadership to to address that or to respond to that? Well, it's a very good question, and I think there's a lot of uncertainty there. No one actually knows exactly what that means. Uh, I think that uh, it, it wasn't our motivation, but I think. Uh, Conveniently for us, perhaps we've we've decided to to put a factory here in the United States, and we announced a, a couple of months ago uh, that we were going to do that. And we're in the process, uh, final process of selecting a location for that. But um, our motivation in doing that is is to be closer to the customer more than anything. Now, it turns out that it's also helpful if there has is a requirement. Mm -hmm. But um, but I. 
The Buy American provision is part of the stimulus package that's going to the states, and when the states turn around and then buy, say, a solar system for a school in their state, then it might apply there. But that's a that's a long process, and I'm not sure how long that's going yeah. to take and exactly how it's going to work out. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it'll be uh, it'd be interesting to see well, you know how many how strict that requirement is because we don't really know at this point. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, my last question is. Uh, perhaps on the high level. I know you focus on policy, but uh, to the extent um, you can address this um, more on the market-based factors mm -hmm. uh, as a company, the strategy preparing for more of a regulatory-based environment to more of a market-based environment mm -hmm. as the market opens up mm -hmm. more and more. What are the strategies in terms of branding, marketing, and, and distribution? Um, no, it's a great question because uh, we do sincerely hope that we move toward a market where no subsidies are required. I mean, I think that's one of the interesting aspects about the solar industry versus, say, the oil and gas industry or the other industries that continually rely on billions of dollars of government subsidies in order to, to stay in business. And we don't want to be there. We want to live in a world where we don't need subsidies. Um, and so, you're right, uh, in addition to driving costs down, we also have to be improving our brand status. And I think that uh, uh, in Europe and in the United States, um, uh, although to a lesser extent here, but a growing sense here that we have a brand that people can identify with. In Europe, there is this concept of uh, bankability, which means that um, if a bank is going to finance a project, whether it be a smaller project or a giant field project, they want to be able to trust the brand of module that's mm -hmm. going on the, the on the roof or on mm -hmm. the project. And Suntec is considered as bankable in Europe as any of the European brands are. Mm -hmm. So and and that same we hope to have that same status here in the US. And we do have a good team of people that, that have come on board in the last few months to begin to do more aggressive marketing. And we've now established a dealer network in the United States of over two hundred dealers, whereas we only had thirty uh, back in the fall. So mm -hmm. we've got a stronger dealer network now and uh, we're beginning to develop a brand identity here. I still think that you know, on the commercial level and in the residential level, um, it's going to be more important for people to trust the people who are actually installing the products. Um, okay. That that's really where the trust lies, and they they trust the dealer or the installer to pick the right products, mm -hmm. uh, to pick ones that can be trusted. Mm -hmm. And so our relationship building effort is with those with installers, installers. Um, because I don't think a consumer, if you're buying, if you're on a house, you own a house, and you want to put a system on your roof, you're not going to go to an installer and say, I want you to use this brand okay. of of solar panel, but if the installer says, you know, this is a good brand and it's it's, it's at a fair price, then people will they will trust those dealers. On the utility scale, it's as important as it is in Europe to have a good, strong brand that people understand that it's not only a cost a, a cost competitive brand, but it also has a strong warranty. The company is going to be around for a long time to honor that warranty, and that the technology is sound. And so, um, I think that's uh, that's an effort that we've undertaken for years in doing these larger projects in Europe and I think we're well established here in the US in that level of the market because they can look to Europe and they can say, oh, well, you have a 30 megawatt plant here or a 50 megawatt plant there. Obviously, you know what you're doing. So, uh, so it's, it, it's uh, growing more important here, but, uh, but I think you're, you're exactly right. It's a very good question. Don't, don't <laughs> get you. asked that question very often, but yeah, I think yeah, it's a... I, I it's a that, yeah, well, yeah. thank you. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome and thank you. Yeah, okay. And um, best of luck. Thank you very much.